hope you enjoyed your lab. As you observed, the sun's rays reach our Earth at different times and intensities, which results in different things being heated at various rates. The energy from the sun that reaches the Earth's surface is in the form of electromagnetic waves, which are also called photons. Have you ever been to the beach on a sunny day? The sand gets really hot. If you went back at night, the sand would be much cooler. The temperature of the water would change very little. The reason for this is that the water has a high heat capacity relative to the sandy beach, meaning that it takes a lot of energy to heat up the water or cool it off. Like an unbalanced teeter-totter, falling to one side or the other, the Earth is constantly trying to balance temperature differences. The cooler areas attract warm air, while the warmer areas push air outward in an attempt to cool itself down until a perfect balance is reached everywhere. Due to the unequal heating of the Earth's surface, this balance is never reached. Air rushes from one place to another as it attempts to balance temperature and pressure. This rushing air is commonly referred to as wind. On a global scale, massive jet streams transport air from one part of the globe to another. The oceans of the Earth transfer heat from one location to another via massive ocean currents. These currents are like rivers flowing across the vastness of Earth, bringing warm waters from the equator up to the higher latitudes and cooler water down towards the equator. Fun fact! The Earth receives about 1,366 watts of direct solar radiation per square meter. That's an incredible amount of energy. In fact, it has been estimated that the total surface area required to power the world with solar energy alone is only around 366,375 square kilometers. That may seem like a lot, but to put this in perspective, that is less area than the state of Montana. The entire surface of the world is about 510 million squared kilometers.